Uh, it's 7 o'clock. Um, we'll start. This is a meeting of the Town of Norton Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, I'm Tom Noel. With me tonight, uh, Jim Tenore, Brian Spangler, uh, Mr. Iafredi is our Building Commissioner, and we also have Town Council with us for um, an initial matter, uh, Robert mm -hmm. Rubenstein. Brian Carmichael, thank you for, um, for setting this up. Um, the revised agenda uh, dated uh, the 18th of the month. Uh, we had to push the items uh, just a few minutes off because uh, we are going to uh, uh, need to speak with town council about an ongoing case in Superior Court. Um, at this point, I would entertain a motion. I get the motion in front of me. I would entertain a motion um, from member uh, that uh, to discuss strategy pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy concerning a pending litigation now before Superior Court known as Ibrahim uh, versus Board and Bristol County Superior Court. Uh, Action 2173 CV 361 as uh, having discussions in public and in, in our estimation uh, would be uh, potentially detrimental to the town's interest in, in the litigation. Is there such a motion? So moved. I'll second. Any discussion? No. Mr. Tenori, how do you vote on that motion? Yes. Mr. Spangler? Yes. Mr. Noel votes yes as well. Um, I have to amend that motion. We are to return to public session thereafter. That actually has to be part of the motion. Will, that, will you make that amended motion? I will make that amended motion. Awesome. Okay. And Mr. Tenore, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Spangler? Yes. Mr. Noel votes yes as well. It's just a technicality. Um, we are going to go into executive session with council for just a few moments. We're going to move to another room. I'd ask that you... Uh, stay and we will be back in just a few minutes to re-enter uh, public session. In uh, public session as a board, we're back in public session as a board at 718, having uh, taken care of an executive session. Uh, we've got the start time uh, when we can from the, the tape or something. All right, we have, uh, and that just developed in the last few weeks, so apologies for, for that. Uh, council wanted to speak to us about a litigation matter as, uh, as we announced. So uh, we have several items on the agenda tonight. One item we received a uh, letter requesting that it be uh, withdrawn or held and we'll get to that in a moment. Um, the first is the continued hearing on the application for Zero Oak Street, applicant Stephen Dale Hinton, owner Lorraine Peru. And we have representatives on that application with us again tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, can you introduce yourself again for the record? Sure, Denise LeBrew from Remax Real Estate Center. Yes. Stephen Hinton from Rentham. Thank you. Um, we continued the hearing last time because we had some questions and I was concerned about a couple of legal issues uh, that I think we've clarified because we asked uh, town council to weigh in and that's not what that downstairs meeting was about but we asked for town council to uh, verify a couple of things for us and we also asked the town manager uh, to get us whatever records the town had on this and um, I'll ask the applicant first to uh, tell us if it has anything new for us over the last meeting. Other than the title and the deed we sent you? Yes. Uh, and to clarify the dates, that's about all we have. Okay, okay. So those additional materials were, um, were in the file, are in the file. I am uh, still concerned because my take was confirmed by council 
uh, Amy Quessel, not Robin, but Amy, uh, whom I wrote to uh, right after the last meeting, who said, in fact, uh, we were correct that if the lots were in common ownership at the time zoning was instituted, they merge by operation of law. And I actually asked a second question. Here, one lot was conforming, and the other lot was non-conforming. And she said, that doesn't matter. It's, they merged together. That was the purpose of uh, the section um, implementing zoning changes in the 1970s. And specifically right now, it's bylaw section 175-6.3, small lots, contiguous lots, non-conforming lots. So that at the change in the institution of zoning, the lots 22 and the other lot merged in ownership, in single ownership, as they were owned by the same entity or person at that time. Uh, council clarified that what occurred later, the town's taking for tax purposes, does not affect the zoning by law. And she recommended that we stand by the bylaw and observe that. And therefore, uh, my take is that we have to deny the application for a uh, buildable lot. If we could respond, I yes. think what we were, the case that we were making was that yep, there was no argument about the merging of the lots when that zoning um, bylaw was, was formed. Um, but there was a hardship that was created when the town took that lot um, and that lot would have been part of the sale uh, when they sold, sold the larger piece. The intention was to sell it with that smaller lot. They did not have the, the intention of withholding it. Um, their intention was to keep it together. But because the town had taken it inadvertently, um, that created the hardship. And that's what we're here to, to try to remedy and, and rectify. And that, that is understood. Uh, the problem is that the records show something different than what was presented at the first meeting and what was assumed by me at least and perhaps other board members, but we can discuss that tonight. There was no conveyance from the town back to the owners. There was no conveyance at all. And in fact, there are correspondences that are of public record and there are recordings in the property line at the Bristol Registry of Deeds that counter the statement that there was a transfer from the town. What happened was, if I may summarize, the town said only that if the taxes were paid, it would remove the tax lien that was placed on the parcel and that it was the town was explicit that it was up to the owners to determine ownership. And the town made that point at three separate occasions in correspondence to the LaRue's in 16 and 17 that the town was simply going to remove the tax lien and it was up to the LaRue's to take whatever action they felt necessary to determine ownership. But and it was beyond to, a tax lien. They actually filed a taking. Yes, understood. Right? Hold on, please. There is a letter, and you can have a copy, dated May 11, 2016. I made a couple of copies. Pass out. And we'll put this in the, the record, of course. This is in the public record. It's in the town's files. Here's one. I'll ask you to share that, and I can pass that up to the applicant. So on May 11, 2016, uh, letter to the LaRue's uh, from Catherine Van Dyne, uh, the town of Norton, talking about this. And the last paragraph near the bottom, and those are my highlights, the purple or pink highlights. Uh, if you are willing to pay the balance due to the town, the town will release its tax lien and vacate the land court judgment. If you are not willing to pay the balance, the town intends to conduct a public auction in connection with this property in the near future. Mm -hmm. The balance was paid for whatever reason, I can't say. I realize the applicant now, you are saying it was for the purpose of getting the parcel back. But the, the town was very clear in a few months later, February of 2017, there's another letter to Nicholas Goodier, 
uh, an attorney who was, I, I presume, acting uh, for the LaRue's. No. No? Who was the attorney acting <clears throat> for? I don't know, but it wasn't Mr. Goudier. Oh. What, who was Mr. Nicholas Goudier? Do you know? Yeah. Who was he representing? I don't know, because when we dealt with Catherine Van Dyne, she said, we, we sat down with her twice, and she's... No, I'm not asking that, please. Uh, who did I, he represent? Do you know? He may have represented Arnold Tennyson. I had no idea. There if, is a... I, wait I, a minute. There is, Excuse there me, is, sir. no, no, no there's, there's, you're out of order. Hold on. We're trying to resolve this, and I'm trying to give my explanation. I, what you told us a month ago was not accurate. It was. And that caused me to work several hours, Mr. Carmichael to work several hours, and many people in the town office to work many hours to uncover this stuff. There is correspondence in February of 2017 from the town's attorney, Sidall and Sidall, to Attorney Goodier. This office represents the town of Norton. Here, I will pass out a copy of this correspondence as well. You may have that. Near the bottom of the first page, and those highlights are mine again. On May 24, 2016, your client, Mr. Leo LaRue, telephoned Ms. Van Dyne claiming that he owned the property and requested a meeting to discuss the balances due to the town. Neither the town nor Ms. Van Dyne has ever concurred with this claim, but agreed to provide the balances owed. The last, the last sentence of that paragraph says, it would be Mr. and Mrs. LaRue's discretion to clarify and confirm their ownership. They were, their attorney, and. I can only assume that this was their attorney because our attorney wrote to this person saying, your client, the LaRue's, Mr. LaRue, our attorney was clarifying to their attorney that ownership was up to the LaRue's to establish. In August, you presented us with what you called confirmatory deeds from the LaRue's to themselves, remember? I, I, and I said, is there a deed from the town to the LaRue's? And you said, there must be. No, we I looked think for I said it. There must be. I did not you said must be. that you had researched the town, the I land said, evidence records. I said I was not sure why the instrument that was used to transfer ownership back to LaRue's was used the way it was. The detail that you are omitting in your explanation and overview. There are a lot of details I'm if, if, omitting. I, 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 please. Mm. The, the tax lien. The LaRue's owned the property. The tax lien was filed against Mr. Keniston, who did not own the property. The taking was against Arnold Keniston, who did not own the property. Understood. So it was taken without even the LaRue's knowing it was being taken. Notice was published in the newspaper and provided I to... Know, but it was notified... Yes, Keniston understood. Was, so understood. That was the town mistake. issued a tax was, lien against the wrong, the person, wrong person, person at the time. That caused, and the town's position that caused all the, the time was that it was up to the LaRue's to dispute that, and the LaRue's did not dispute the letter that you showed ownership or establish ownership. The ta taking happened in 1989. Yes, we know that. And the judgment of the land tax court, whatever it's called, was in the early 90s. I'm aware of that. The problem is that at the time zoning was implemented, the two lots were owned by the same owner. Something happened in the interim, and you're saying to us that it confused the LaRue's, and I understand why it confused no, I, the LaRue's. I'm, I'm saying the LaRue's it was a mistake. It was a mistake, the but the part, LaRue's had ownership, they and had it was up to no them to idea, establish. They had, they had no idea that this lot had been taken from them until they tried to sell the land in 2016. In a private sale, mm -hmm. they had counsel at the time. Counsel could have and perhaps did raise the issue. I don't know what happened in that private sale. I don't know why the LaRue's they agreed didn't to go sale. through. They didn't. Wait a minute. Agreed to go through with the question. sale with only one parcel and not both. We weren't there. We weren't part of that. Because they didn't want to hold up the sale. They wanted the money for the bigger parcel. They wanted to sell the total. That's understandable. And they had it under contract to sell the total, 
when they did the title search, it came up that this one parcel had been taken. That's when they learned for the first time that that parcel had been taken in 1989. They did not know. Understood, and, so and, that, and that's not a dispute. But that's what I'm saying. That taking from the wrong person is what created the hardship. It's what created the title problem that it's the LaRue's, I'm sorry ma'am, it is not a hardship under zoning. We'll discuss that. But at that point, the LaRue's lots had already merged, that they couldn't sell them mm -hmm. together. How could they merge if, if the town had taken one of the lots? How could they even take one of the lots if they had merged? You've got to listen. Please listen. The lots merged back in 1977, six, when zoning was implemented. The lots merged by operation of law. So then how did the town, how was the town able to take one lot without the rest? The town didn't take them. The town There's filed, an instrument of taking. Hold on. I'm not going to let you re-argue what you already argued last month. I understand that. There was litigation instituted by the town against Mr. Keniston, the wrong party. Judgment was entered by the court, and in fact, one of the correspondences says it was the Registry of Deeds who did the title rundown that established Mr. Kennison as the owner at the time. I don't know that. That's what the correspondence says. So it was, it was the town's mistake, and then the lots, one lot was sold to a developer. I understand that. We understand that. Let me just continue the final here in July of 2017, a letter, a letter to the LaRue's from the town of Norton from Catherine Van Dyne again, says, I received the vacation of judgment and withdrawal and tax lien case in today's mail. I've attached a copy for your records. As stated in the past, the town is not confirming ownership only releasing the tax lien and the land court judgment. So the town did everything it was, it said it would do, and the town released the lien and the, released the judgment of the tax court. And those were sent to the LaRue's in 2017. My point is only this. My point is that the record was established a long time ago. You can't come back in and say uh, that we didn't know we messed up a sale and therefore now you need a variance from us. You can't, in my view, and we're going to discuss this, there's not a motion yet to go into discussion or to close the public hearing. In my view and in council's view, the lots had already merged back in the 1970s and the LaRue's were responsible for determining the whole there length two, of the years. Are there two instruments? One is a tax lien that is an instrument that got filed with the Registry of Deeds. And then following that, there is an instrument of taking. It's a that, judgment. That is a taking that the town took that portion of the total. Now, if you're telling me that it's all one lot and it merged all together, then how are they able to take a portion? That was a mistake. Not, that was wrong. So I'm glad you admit that that was a mistake. I, because not, that, that's... You know, I don't have to admit anything. The record speaks for itself. I'm not admitting anything. Did, we didn't do though. anything. The record speaks for itself, and we knew that a month ago. Please be reasonable. What I'm telling you is there is no basis for a variance in my view or in town council's view. I'm asking you if there are other reasons that we should consider this on any other basis. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I think well, legally we can't. You want to listen? I'm listening. Please continue. You're not. You keep telling people to shut up, and you're going to keep going. Sir, I don't use that term. Well, all right. And it, right. I don't appreciate you ascribing right. that to this okay. board. We Basically are trying to proceed in good thing, faith. Though, Sir, lose, we are trying to proceed in good faith. Okay. We shouldn't be arguing this. Let's tell I you stated that. my position. Tell me now what your position is. Keniston, do you know how long Keniston owned that land? Did you go back and research that? What difference does it make? It does how because long? he owned it before he had it, his name before there was this zoning, okay? Yes. Prior to the 74 or whatever it is. So if he owned it in 69 <laughs> or 70. Yes. I don't know when he uh, uh, conveyed right, it to the Maroons. No. If, if he did, then when they both supposedly merged, they didn't merge because Keniston owned it. No, sir. And no, the LaRue's own. owned it. I, I think the point in is the that In the 1970s, it, it, the LaRue's owned it. The record established that. You told us that last time. No, I didn't. 
No, I didn't. I, they bought they bought the 20 acres in 1964. Can you show me where the record says that Keniston owned lot 22? Well, when do you in think the Keniston owned it? No, it's not up to me. It's when that, do it's I not think? Up, it's not. So you're here asking for the for us to decide it, and you have to make the case. We're not going to make the case for you. We can put you under oath here and ask you yeah. on the record. And I'm asking you when Keniston sold the parcels to the LaRue's. You told us last August, last read, month. Why don't you read this, please, both these. Now, you don't look like you want to do it. You would go oh, like this, so let's face it. You're not happy. You don't look like you're happy either. Not you. Um, okay. These are these were in our record last month. No. Or did you send these to us after no. the meeting? No. Did you send us to us after the meeting? No. no I've seen right these now. before. You might have sent this one, which might have been one of them. October 18, 1988. These are October 18, 1988. And the other one. And the other one that you just handed us is September 8th, 2014. What's your purpose in presenting these? It says, uh, who owned the property? Otis Dyer, a letter from Otis Dyer. Right. In, in Which one? 88 or 14? Read them both. No, I don't want to read them. I'm asking you. When read. did the Keniston parties convey the property to the LaRue's? Tell me. The Kenistons never did. The Kenistons never sold the parcel we're dealing with to the LaRue's. When it was taken by the town, that was the first, and I'll tell you, the first time in the title search, if she had done it, who made up the boundaries of it? It's not our duty to do a title I, search, I sir. It's your it duty. It's the applicant's I a, duty. I got a title search here. You want to read it? It's like 50 pages. You gave it to us already. No, I did not this one. Well, another one? Yep. Well, we have one from August, and that was inconclusive. Um, <laughs> I mean, it, it seems. Can you tell it, me when, it, it seems, when the LaRue's me, acquired the property, both parcels? Both parcels. Just tell us. LaRue. LaRue. It was conveyed to the LaRue's from Marie Tracy. It was a deed, uh, book 1444, Facey. page 186, 1964. Marie Facey conveyed to picture. Leo and Lorraine LaRue. That was okay, so parcel. you're saying that was the big parcel. And it wasn't, wasn't the little one. When did the little one get conveyed? No, I see it was both. No, it was because of the, yep. when they took it from the town. I believe it was both. No. I'm not a title thing. expert, no. but. I, I think re regardless, the fact that you're telling us on one hand that the two lots had merged, yes. but then the town was able to take one of the lots. And then and the town dismissed it, that judgment. Not until. 19, uh, 2017, Correct. and they were trying to sell it in 2016, and the developer who wanted to buy it didn't want to wait, so he bought it, and they're, they're left holding this, and it did impact the sale, it impacted the sale price, that's, but that's and now another it, impacts, case. it impacts the value and a value of this land. I'm not doubting you. So the taking by the town created the hardship on this lot. All right, we'll go with that. Is that your response to what we've said? What I've said tonight? Uh, that's that's my position. Okay. All right. The town's taking I to will, the heart. Is there anybody the else to speak in favor of or in opposition to the application? Seeing none, is there anybody online? I don't see anybody. Uh, do you wish to, members, ask the applicants any further questions or is there a motion to close the public hearing that we can discuss? I don't have any questions. I, um, um, I'm comfortable with closing the uh, public hearing. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Second. How do you vote, Mr. Tenori? Yes. How do you vote, Mr. Spangler? Yes. And Mr. Noel votes yes to close the, the public session, um, the uh, testimony session. I'd invite you to be seated. You can, you can remain there if you'd like. I don't think we have any record other than what was presented to us in August. So those guys. The sale occurred to the LaRue's prior to zoning. I thought we established that at the last meeting. Thank you. And at the time of the institution of zoning, 
the lots merged. Correct. Is there evidence that the LaRues did not own both lots during the 1970s? I don't see it. I don't recall that from when the title rundown was presented or anybody's statement. In fact, the statement is consistent with what we heard tonight, that they believe there was a hardship because the town imposed a tax lien on the property under the wrong owner name. Owner name. I concede that that messed up, may have messed up the sale to the developer of the large parcel. Agreed. As I also said last time, that's not up to this board to remedy. That's a different, that's a court of law. And if the LaRues or the estate or the trust, with all due respect, wish to try to remedy that, they can do that in a court of law. My position is simply that as a zoning matter, we cannot render this parcel buildable as a separate parcel because it had already merged with the large parcel back in the 70s. And in fact, I would ask the building commissioner to separate out one parcel from a larger parcel. Isn't that an ANR? Approval not required, yeah, through the planning board. So that wouldn't be ours to do either. In other words, if this is one lot, we can't act on a subset of the one lot. It's a legal matter. I can't, I can't ask a question. Um, I, go ahead, yep. I, I'm just wondering, if there was a, if they're considered all one lot, how is it that there's a tax lien only on a portion of the total? I don't know if the tax office, the assessor's office, goes lot by lot or deals with merged lots. I don't know that. Regardless, it was a mistake. I don't think it's regardless, but it, it, it goes to... But it was a mistake. So... Is that, and it impacted the And it the impacted value the that, sale. But in my not view... Not just the sale, and but it house, impacted this lot specifically. Yes. In yeah, I, yeah, and I don't think I don't think any of us are dis. I don't, I don't disagree with that statement in that that narrative. I uh, I agree with. I think this is just isn't a zoning matter. I mean, if the applicant or the applicants uh, deceased, uh, you know, the Larues, who are both deceased, I believe. Mr. Larue is deceased. Mrs. Okay, Larue I, I is still with us. I apologize for that. Uh, the Larues, if if they have any remedy here, it's that the town, an action by the town back in 1990-something messed up their title. But the the sale or the tax lien and then the judgment were advertised. They were published. It's notice to the world, including to the, the, the yeah, proper my, owners. My understanding of them, they saw the uh, analysis too from council is that it would have been incumbent upon the owner to rectify that at the time of the sale they, sh they should have recognized that that parcel right you know was not included because there was some confusion on ownership and clarified that really prior to the, the sale they had the right to step in then now applicant is saying that the LaRue's never knew about the tax taking by the town I right. assume that's what you mean by the right. sale right that was in the late 80s and early 90s and um, we don't know. We weren't right. there. Right. All we have is a record that it was published as a lien and a tax uh, tax lien and taking, and that the court entered judgment in was it '93, I think. Then, when the Larues came later in the 2016 era, perhaps it was earlier than that, they said, "Wait, wait, this is our parcel." When they tried to sell it to the developer they discovered a mistake had been made. But my point is the yeah. town even then said it is the LaRue's responsibility to establish ownership. And it was at whatever tax sale occurred in the 90s. Right. It was in 2015 when they were negotiating for the sale of these lots and then discovered that a mistake had been made. They could have right then disputed everything and gone to court to correct the title. They could have, and they, for whatever reason, they chose not to. And it's not up to me to guess or assume why they didn't do it then. It doesn't mean that they're, you know, they made an evil judgment because they wanted to sell the big parcel and get money for the big parcel. We don't know that. 
But that's the very reason why I don't think, and council doesn't think, this is a zoning matter. We can't pick apart a merged parcel and say, well, this portion now is separate, so we can give you a variance for this portion of a merged lot. It's done. It was done 40 so years ago. So Unfortunately. I, I have a follow-up question on that, because if you're still considering them merged parcels, but they're two separate owners now, how does that work? I have no idea. I, I, it's not a zoning matter. That's what I was going to say. I think it's it, this. The issue isn't for this particular board to, to entertain. I think is what we're trying to. Well, we trying were to directed across. here by the building department. We we tried to appeal yes. to the, the building commissioner, and we were directed to. That was proper. Appeal. That's the proper, and then we take a look at it, and then we determine whether it, is it falls under our purview or not. And okay. I think as everything Mr. Noel has been saying, everything I've read, I think we've all come to a consensus of the narrative of what, have hap what has happened, whether some agree or don't. We're not describing any bad actions right. on your part. And I when I said you misled us in August, take that with a grain of salt. I was misled in August <clears throat> because I thought you said that the town conveyed it back to the LaRue's. And that's when we went digging for that conveyance. And it turns out that the conveyance, there was no conveyance. The town never had it. The town had a tax lien and a judgment, which yeah. is all that is. And that's not a zoning matter either. And then the town released the judgment by telling the court through its council, Siddle and Siddle, back in the 2016-17 range, filed papers and sent the LaRue's uh, the fact that they had released the tax lien and the court negated the judgment. The, 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 and these were recorded in the land evidence records. So they were available to the applicant now and they were available to the LaRue's eight years ago. Uh, the vacation of judgment is issued by the re, uh, recorder of deeds uh, and the court. Withdrawal of tax lien case is one document uh, that's recorded. And the other is the vacation of judgment, which is uh, says this is to certify the complaint to foreclose tax liens in the above case under certain deeds for non-payment. Uh, after due proceedings under said complaint were instituted, finally on March 8, 1993, a judgment foreclosing and barring all rights of redemption was entered, motion to vacate judgment was filed, and the same was allowed by the court, in other words, April 3, 2017. So this notice of the vacating of judgment is directed to be recorded and registered and or registered in the Bristol County Registry of Deeds, and it, it is recorded. It bears a recording stamp. So again, the town and others made mistakes back then, and it is understood that it, from what you were saying, messed up the sale because the LaRue's didn't convey both parcels. I don't know if the, the developer has a claim for the second parcel. They might, but that's not up to us to decide either. So somebody has to take control of this, and I suggest that it's the LaRue's and their agents, you're their agents, to make, get a final determination in court. But it's not something, in my view or in council's view, that the zoning board can do. And do you have other points of discussion or no. counter arguments? I don't feel, whether it's a hardship in the English colloquial sense of the word, um, I'll agree with the applicant on that. It's colloquially, it's it's a hardship. It was a mistake. It's not an admission on our, it's clear in the records it was a mistake. Right. But mm -hmm. under zoning bylaws, we can't, we, just, can't we can't take piece of a parcel and say, you can build on that piece of that parcel now. And it may be that the planning board would have to get involved. It may be that a court of law has to get involved. For some reason, the LaRue's did not take the steps they needed to do 
prior to their sale of the large parcel to the developer for whatever reason. And I can't speak to the chain of events any more than the record shows us. Unfortunately, and I'm not ascribing any bad uh, ill motives to these agents of the applicant or the applicants, for whatever reason, it was their responsibility to clear it up long ago and they did not. But now, there's nothing I don't think that this board can do. I'm thinking, so, do us taking any kind of vote on this mm -hmm. affect them? What are you voting like, on, though? Well, well, we would have to vote on. Was it a variance or a special? Uh, it, was a, it was a variance on lot size. Yeah. So the application was for because it is an undersized lot. It was either lot size or frontage or. Yeah, if it's looked at as an individual lot. Yeah, I, I mean, it's I an the undersized lot for that zoning district. Yeah, 27. So right. Needs to be 40 or 60. Okay. I don't remember off the top of my head. So if we if we were to deny the variance, would that affect? anything like say they did some took some other avenue and corrected this in the next I don't year. believe so that's a question for council too I don't see how it would we're we're acting on an application that was submitted for a piece of property that's part of a larger parcel I mean that in the end that's what council is telling us I think it's presumptive to say that it's still part of the other parcel when there's two owners now of, of, of the two parcels. Okay, I won't and say it. I won't say it. That's the opinion of town council. Let me just state that. That's, right. that's, that's, that's a legal opinion from the legal town opinion of town council. Is that so? Is there, is, I mean, unless there's further discussion to be had, is there a motion to deny the application for the reasons cited, including the, the, the record that's been presented to us, which part of which we had to dig up? from town files and from the recorder of deeds. I'll make that motion. To deny the application. To deny the application. Uh, no, I'll second. Is there any further discussion on that motion? No. Mr. Tenori, how do you vote on that motion? Yes. Mr. Spangler? Yes. Mr. Noel votes yes as well. Apologies, but we have to deny your application. I suggest uh, that you consult uh, council to inquire sooner rather than later whether you have options mm -hmm. or what mm -hmm. options you have. But it's not something this board can correct under the bylaws. And I wish the LaRue's had consulted <coughs> council and retained council who saw this through for them. I don't know why it didn't get resolved back in 16 or 17. I can't speak to that. I mean, what was that in 16 and 17 should have been done? They should have what? I don't think we merged this one. Yeah, unfortunately, we can't at this moment because I don't have we've legal already advice. Taken the vote. Yeah, I, I don't have legal advice for you there. Oh, I don't need. I'm simply advice. observing that. I think the town was pretty clear that it was the Larue's option to establish. I think we have accepted the vote, and we can move on. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank you for your assistance in getting through. Okay. Next on the agenda. <clears throat> The application for, for Lincoln Street. I believe the agenda is wrong. It says an R40 zone, and I think the application shows it's R80. Are there representatives here on Lincoln Street? Thank you. Can you identify yourselves for the record? Gail Resendez. Gail Resendez. Mrs. Resendez, yes. <clears throat> the people mentioned on the application. Thank you. And I believe it's an R80 zone, correct? Okay. I'll tell you yeah, yeah okay. it's fine. I mean, the agenda, the application says R80 as well. Um, 
yeah, the application says R80, but regardless, let's we can get into it and determine that. I think what we have is uh, uh, pre-existing non-conforming due to frontage and lot size and maybe a side yard setback. Um, the, uh, the owners want to um, construct a larger single family residence, correct? What was presented to us uh, as a plan is uh, quite old, but it is uh, a stamped uh, registered engineer's plan. Is that the one from 2006? Um, I thought it was older. Yeah, let's see. Oh, oh right there. Yeah, it's on the block. There. Okay, 2005. Yeah, I didn't see it at first. <laughs> but the date at the top Usually. says uh, December 14, 2006. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, that's what I had seen at the top. Right. So it is an engineered plan. Is the is what the construction that's there now represented on this plan? Though this plan is old. Yes. Okay. Yep. I'm comfortable, I'm comfortable with that statement uh, rather than insisting on a new plan. I don't know that this calls for it because, again, it looks like this is going to increase the habitable area. There's no expansion of the footprint. So the, the, the existing footprint stays the same. Uh, they're just expanding the second floor habitable floor space by more than 25% of what's existing. So it's a finding at 1.6. So our discussion is uh, whether this renders the use any substantially more detrimental to the uh, to the area as what's there. Um, this is for a single family residence going forward. I guess I can ask: uh, Is there anybody else to speak in favor of the application or against it? Present. For the record, none. Uh, nobody online that I see. Nobody speaking up. So um, I don't I don't have any other questions. Do you have questions for the applicant? This seems fairly straightforward. Yep. No, I'm good. I'm good too. Uh, is there a motion to close the public hearing? I'll make that motion to close the public hearing. Second. Mr. Tenori. Yes. Mr. Spangler. Yes. Mr. Noel votes yes as well. Um, I don't see this as a problem. It's it, we need a finding that this. I don't think it increases, uh, makes it substantially more detrimental. It looks like it looks like an old historic. House and property. 1890s. That's cool. Yeah. Very good. Very nice. Yeah. Um, and uh, additional space is going to be added to the uh, top floor, and that's uh, it bumps it over the 25 percent increase. Uh, nobody is uh, against the application. Is there a motion for approval? I will make that motion to approve that. Second by Mr. Spain. Second. Yeah. Yeah. And Mr. Tenori, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Spangler? Yes. Mr. Noel votes yes as well. We will draw up an approval decision with the plan attached and we'll get that on file. This was a lot easier than the last. <laughs> Sorry. And it was easier than the first one with town, yeah. town council too. So thank you and good luck to you in that. Thank you. Thank okay. You very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next on our agenda is property address 38 Charlotte Ave. Is a representative here? Oh, this is, you are an attorney representing Correct. the applicant. My name is Ben Dowling. I represent Eric Wensley. I think I saw on the application. Let me just take a look. This is. Uh, may I may I approach and again? Of those? course. Yes, please do. Is that, I got these. Yeah, uh, that one comes up. Yep, yeah, this is, you have a before oh, or an existing uh, entity. Uh, there are two. two yeah. Yeah, That's all one. Weren't these submitted so in this the, form? They, they were submitted. Yeah. Uh, these are uh, larger printouts. So you thank you. So, yeah, thank you. That's thank you. helpful to our eyes. The only difference between Thanks, um, these and what was submitted is that these show wetlands. That's not necessarily relevant to you, but it's the same plan uh, with wetlands. Understood. Thank you. Is the date different? No, they're not certified. Oh. Were the ones online certified? They, they could be. It does have a it does have a uh, stamped 
red sign, but the actual stamp is not at the bottom left. Digital oh. stamp usually has those, and maybe the stamp is in six. So, uh, oh, so yeah. 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 Uh, apologies for that. The um, is it? That is on the I, computer I, that I printed out. I thought had it. So he's saying right here. Yeah, I I have my printed mouth. Yeah, so it might not have come out. Yeah, sometimes when you right. press well, print, good. you that's can select whether yeah. to print stamps or not. And, yep. Uh, so they're the same as submitted with the application some weeks ago. Correct. Except the dimensions and exactly the, the pertinent information, the differences that the, these plans show wetland delineations. And I believe the, the plans that were submitted through the uh, through, through permitize do have a. A they proper, they proper, do. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I printed yeah. those out. So when you presented these, I was, that, I was confused sorry for that. the confusion. There. We're yeah. going to go with the original sure. plans sure. as on permitized, which has the stamp. Uh, we'll you know, trust that these are the same in dimensions. But um, this is what I would propose to attach to the uh, yeah. the decision. Yep. And again, it's a pre-existing non-conforming for any number of reasons. Um, we have a lot of those in Norton. That's okay. In an R80 zone, the frontage is 90 feet, 13,208 square feet. And the two uh, plans are a, I guess, present existing conditions and intended conditions, right? That's correct. Proposed conditions and existing wow. conditions labeled yep. down at the bottom. So I, I suggest uh, the proposed conditions is actually what we are looking at approving and would be attached to a decision. I have a couple of questions, um, but board, do you have questions on these plans yourself? Uh, not right yet. Okay. I, I, yeah. Go ahead. I, I do. I just um, what caught my eye is the the proposed dwelling is still very so the existing setback to the house anyway is 21 feet proposing to take that down to 10 correct whereas on the easterly side right mm -hmm. um, that's very that's very close to the abutters property and you know cutting that in half of what it is now and it looks like there's room to move the footprint over um, that, that just kind of caught my eye why why it would be so far over well we can ask the uh, the applicant I wondered also about rotating this the proposed structure to make it more northly facing I think yes but north is to the top of the page quite a bit of thought has gone into the but I, I I think by rotating it depending where one puts the access to rotate it the front part of the building would be closer to the westerly property line but I'll let the uh, applicant address those mr. Wensley is here tonight with his wife and his father thank you and uh, he, I, I think you, you maybe you could take us through that. what's going on and why you propose it in the position and location that you do absolutely so um, we have a uh, an architect that is, is helping us along with, with this. So what I'm explaining to you is, is not from my brain and I said, hey, let's do this. It's, it's what I was directed. So um, what's not shown on, on here. Um, We'd let you take credit if you took credit. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm always good for that. Um, what's, what's not really shown on here, um, I don't have my glasses. Um, so we have, um, so on Charlotte Ave, um, uh, storage was added a number of years ago and it's the um, the E1 it's not the gravity fed one it's the one that has the uh, and you guys may be familiar with it it's got um, the the pump grinder it's an injector it's an injector oh, pump, injector so, pump. right Go ahead, um, I'll let you finish I need to uh, no that, that's okay the thank inspector you for understands more than we do but. <laughs> so um, that is if, if you're looking from Charlotte toward the home yep um, that's on the right to the right of the house to the right to, to, that's to the right of the house so um, we're trying not to impede on that and having to move that that would be something I don't even know if we could do is that an underground structure of some a pump it's a, yeah it's, a, it's literally it's exactly what it sounds like so what, what happens is the invert in the street is higher than where the elevation coming into yeah. the foundation is for the sewer so you have to get 
you have to get out, out of the house, gravity fed to the pump, and then the pump then pushes yeah. the waste up into the sewer line in the street. So that's implanted in the ground. It's like having a, like it's like having a toilet in a basement. Like I believe so. Uh, you need it, it, that exactly. It needs to get, get up to get out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But right. that's in the ground, in other words. Correct. Yes, it's, it's underground. underground. So that would be a potential hardship if it... You're suggesting that putting the house if you move anywhere it, closer it, would impact that? It, it would. Yeah. Um, it's now whether that's, that's the driveway yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure, um, but that was the primary reason for putting it in that location. I know it, it, it kind of looks goofy on the plan because you've got the lot going this way and the house kind of going this way, um, but that was the primary um, primary reason there for the um, for the placement of the house. Um, also, the placement of the house here. This is on the pond, um, right, right? And um, the existing neighbors. The lot has been in disarray for quite some time. I mean, we've done our, our best that we can uh, at this point to, to help clean it up a little bit and beautify the neighborhood. Um, but we're also trying to, to not impede on um, the neighbor's enjoyment of, of the pond itself. So mm -hmm. that particular location there also as a secondary benefit, um, in addition to not having to play around with the sewer, um, is it allows the neighbors across the street to still have a view of the pond based on that exact placement, and then the neighbor um, uh, neighbor on the other side who has had a view of the pond to not obstruct that. Okay. Uh, in the back, what I'll call the back of the house, the yep. pond side, yep. there's 39 feet there. Um, maybe that's where the wetlands come in, I don't know. Could that be moved any close? Is that another? Where is the buffer? Yeah. yeah. Well, is that on the bigger maps? So the, there's going to be, there's gonna be environmental concerns and issues that, that oh, yeah, if, this, is if this goes to the next stage, um, not that it's your purview, but it's in the floodplain. Um, and then John Thomas, conservation agent, I think, I believe is going to have some um, some comments once you get to that point. So that would be with the proximity to uh, what it kind of pond. Our step one is the zoning board. Exactly. Step two is the conservation. Thank you. Commission. Thank you for letting us know that. Understood. Um, Do we know the, what the buffer is? What is required off the lake? I'm not sure off the top of my head. There's yeah. a so there's a, a twenty. I, I know. Um, I've I'm taken a, a real sure pretty a deep dive into this. So there's a twenty five foot no disturb zone from the um, from from the the edge of the wetland twenty five feet toward the oh. home. Okay. And then beyond that is just buffer zone, the standard buffer zone. It's interesting so that that's not on the survey. We had the survey done first, and the wetlands were delineated after. Um, so the large one here it shows the large one shows that we can incorporate has, has the wetlands. both if if you want to, obviously. Um, it does. It down here. Well, that's the isn't that the that's the wetland delineation at the bottom. Yeah, oh, that looks like the property. Can I, can I, can I see the WF? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that, that, oh, I it's read that as a revision plan. Yeah, it's not oh, labeled. I, it's not labeled, but no, that would be vegetation okay. or potentially environmental, and then you, your 100 year floodplain and the elevation is in order up here um, on the plan. Right, just one so little, this is the one little corner right that's outside of the floodplain that's, that's. Uh, that would, uh, yeah. That wouldn't be a what? It would all have to be confirmed by John, but yeah, I don't know, and I'm not stepping on toes. But yeah, I don't the buffer know should be understood. The buffer would be something. Um, you think it would be a straight line? Should, yeah, it should, should it be. It should be, a, but should I don't be an know offset that. from the shoreline. But elevation right? and elevation. Elevation of the water line can be very different. It can be irregular. It's. I mean, a map just shows you know the pond. The pond doesn't have a straight line uh, at its edge. You know. I, I mean, I'm going. I'm assuming this was done by some professional who knows. Uh, because, but that's conservation again. It's not us. You know, just the graphic used here is a uh, is not a definitive boundary. Also, it's um, sorry for giving. I, I have an architectural background, so that to me looks like a revision cloud. Like if you were issuing a revision on a drawing, you would cloud it and then tag it. Um, that's about, that's it, not how you would normally draw a boundary. So the wet, um, so the way the wetlands um, may just just to show you. So the way the wetlands are done. So let's say this is a pond here, 
And um, so uh, botanists came out and yeah. um, said, okay, this area here starts the wetland. And he walks around the whole property and says, okay, this is the next boundary, X number of feet from the first one. Um, and then keeps going till the property line and flags them. And then the surveyor comes back out um, and shoots the, the flag and ultimately comes up with, okay, there's the first end of it. In other words, it's not a continuous, there, yeah. there's four or five flags, whatever it is. So it's, here's the first one, this is the next boundary, here's the next boundary, and it you know, kind of does this zigzag, there's only five, um, and it doesn't. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I'll be honest, to, to me, this just looks like someone approximating vegetation uh, location. Uh, but, within a, a plot. but we're not, we're only getting, we're only asking the question as to whether you could turn the building or put it further away from some other side yard or front setback. We're not, it's not our job to get into the wetlands determination. I mean, if it does, what, if we approve something and it doesn't work at environmental, at well, I'm just thinking of it, aren't we supposed to be evaluating whether it's more or less detrimental to the, to to the, the neighborhood, but not to the environment. Not the the environment is right. taken care of by CONCOM. By Concom. So, so to, to okay. elaborate on, on the applicant's point, once this is created, typically what the conservation director will, will go out and walk, either with the applicant, with the, with the engineer, um, and, and either agree or disagree with, with their finding. But that, all that stuff will get hashed out at, at the next. And this, for, for lack of a better term, uh, this becomes the risk for, for the applicant. If you approve and conservation denies, it's, 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 it becomes so the applicant. Okay. To come or, back. Or, or, understand. or certainly if, if conservation has comments about the plan that, that adjust the, what we've presented to you, we're, we're coming back to the zoning. I understand. Okay. Point. It's a process. Okay. Thanks. Okay. In answer, a roundabout way though, if they turn that a little bit, that's actually going closer to the pond. And also the, the front part, looking at this jut, jut out section here, if you rotate it, it gets closer to the the west side yard property line. Yeah. This part here, yeah. you know, if you rotate it on that corner, yep. it gets real close. If you rotate it from the center, it doesn't. It gives you a few more feet there, but takes away a few feet from the other side. Both are variances that would be necessary, right? Because the side yard is 35. It should be 35. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's right here on the plan. I am noticing, though, on this plan. Yep. There is no actual numbers on here, but if the depictions are correct, the houses that are on either side are very close to the to their side yards as well. You got to take into consideration the area, right? It, exactly. The, the that's that's my case. only reason for bringing that up, other right. than. And we'll ask if that, anybody yeah. here to speak in opposition to this. Although the ten is very close, and I, I agree, I, I do. I mean, again, we don't have, this isn't a closed session. I'm just saying mm -hmm. what I see. I mean, I yeah, understand. There's already a shed here, too. Yeah, there's already a shed here. I mean, that, the side yard doesn't concern me as much as normally it might. But there is an existing dwelling there, correct? Correct. There's an existing correct. house there now. So that's all, well, it's 21 feet instead of 10. I understand. They're coming down but we'll ask if yeah. there's anybody here to oppose this because of the closeness or anything like that. I yeah, we were just, I mean, we were talking about the side yard, and that's why I bring that up. Like, again, there are no actual lines determining how far those actual houses on the left or the right yard. Yeah, anecdotally, design. visually. Visually, yeah. they look pretty close to me. Yeah, so absolutely. this wouldn't be out of norm. So I'll, I'll say, too, uh, so on, on the, if you're facing the pond again, or if you're looking at the plan upward on the, this side here, um, there's a, a shed, a neighbor has a shed, um, there's a re big tall retaining wall, and the neighbor has a shed, literally a good gust of wind would just blow it off the retaining wall onto the, onto the property. So it is, it's a very close knit neighborhood, not just from a, a personalities and neighbor standpoint, but yeah. also from a, prop a property standpoint. That's what's the concrete retaining wall, CRW? Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's uh, essentially the property. Oh, line. I see. It's, it's sitting right there. I see a shed too, yeah. The, I mean, the, the proposed house would be, you think, an improvement the neighborhood which help beautify the neighborhood yep. um, one question I had um, the uh, 
the, how do I describe it? The 30.2 on the west side is to the rear corner of the deck. I don't know what, I don't know what distance this is from the road, 20 foot section, 20 feet section of road to that side of the house. It's not here and it looks to be the same or less. I, I, I was going to bring that up. In other words, this dimension here looks to be maybe less than that one. I mean, so we are relying upon the, the dimensions depicted in the plan that was drawn by the engineer who stamped the plan. Um, Understood. Okay. I'm bringing up. I would say it's for. I would say it's for. By looking at this one again, again I know we're going to go off that one, which I, I'm, I think it's the same. It's just missing the actual red stamp, the larger one they handed out. Uh, that looks farther away to me. Very slight. I did it with a ruler. It's like maybe a foot when you convert it. Yeah. It's tricky. Uh, my point is. We could ask for that dimension to be added to the plan if we deemed it necessary. Although, if we don't, we say the westerly closest point to the west side yard is no less than, will be no less than 30.2 feet. Then it's up to the building inspector to make sure that that's the case, whichever corner of the house we're talking about. Gotcha. Or deck. You know, I mean, we limit it according to the plan. So if the applicant's confident that this is no closer than that, we can go with that if the board's comfortable with it. Yeah, we're confident with that. And we're confident about that. If what can can you uh, so the so are these seeing here? So this side right here? Yeah. Uh to the Chairman so Noel was saying to, to this twenty foot side, is this closer than the this one? What's drawn in. Yeah, right. Yeah. Then yeah, what's no, drawn no, in here. Which is the smaller of the two. Yeah, which is the smaller of the two and the I, yeah, for me, it's a scale right. dry. It, it, I don't think it would make a difference for me whether that dimension was there. Yeah. Or not. Okay. For me. Yeah. And my point was just the decision will say the structure will, will be no closer than 30.2 feet to the westerly side yard boundary Come. on yep. the private way. Yep. So then it's up to the applicant to keep it to that distance, and building inspector, you know, enforces that. So whatever. If the building comes closer than that, there's a problem. So, yep. if everyone's comfortable with that, I'm fine with it. I'm just, I was just pointing it out. Yep. Gotcha. Um, but are, are there other questions? I mean, I'm supposing that, taking what the applicant is, is telling us, that you know, professional drew this and it's placed in this position. I don't know that it's up to to me to say. Gee, can you can you rotate it? You know, five degrees uh, counterclockwise. Maybe it would be better on the right, but less good on the left. I don't know that it's up to us to suggest that. Unless you know, if we have a problem with the ten feet, we can say so, and we can deny it, or we can offer the applicant an opportunity to. Uh, say, hey, fellas, we'll come back next month and we'll try to rotate it a little bit to get a little more than 10.7 feet. No, I mean, that doesn't bother yeah. me. I, I asked about it initially, it yep. caught my eye, but you know, I'm seeing that the, their existing shed is only six feet off. You know, looks like that uh, goes to, to away. Me, the existing that shed will go away. It does. I'm just saying yeah. the existing, the, the new, the new plan compared to existing really doesn't appear to be affecting uh, anything in a detrimental way over what's there now. So you don't have I mean, a problem with it? I don't. I mean, the side yard's reduced from 21 to 10 and a half, but I don't think that that's... It, but it's also in the same area that there's existing development anyway. Correct. Yeah, so. And the retaining wall and the neighbor's yeah. shed as well. Yeah. And we'll ask again if anybody is here. Right. So are there other questions for the applicant? Um, I could ask now if there's anybody else to speak in favor of or in opposition to this application as shown on the plan. I, I'm assuming your your wife is in favor of I'm and your father yeah, your my father's my, my dad my dad lives up the street so he wants he wants me to be a little closer. Well but you're closer, right? If you're moving the Yeah, that's that's why he's here. He's here in support of that. Moving the house but he's not on the butter so he has help. And it's a nice neighborhood. We're we're trying to really respect the people that are around, like we said, and make sure that we're not wrecking a view of a neighbor that we've been you know, working on the 
removing seven boats and a and yeah, we're looking at the looking at the maps right now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? That was a lot of fun and a big trailer and oh wow, that. Yeah. Oh. It was a lot of boats. There were yeah. a lot of boats there. Yeah. No titles, so that was yeah. a creative <laughs> mess. Yeah. But you get to know them when you've been out there sweating all summer long. <laughs> Did you just yeah. acquire uh, the home? Yes, uh, in uh, June. May or June. June. Yeah. June. We put an offer in, and then. So again, we can ask to tweak it. I don't know that it's our position to do that, unless you're bothered by the ten feet to the corner of the porch on the, the right, which is the smallest. It actually improves. Um, I saw earlier today, it pushes it back from Charlotte Ave. Right, a little bit. From 11 and a half I mean, to it's, 15 and It's half. so close. I'm surprised how else you've been hit by a car so close to the street. Like, yeah, it right is, it. it's, it's yeah. just right there. Yeah. I know exactly where it is. <laughs> <laughs> you've broken into that house, haven't no. you? No, no, no. <laughs> Are those your socks that we found? <laughs> oh, you just dumped all your boats there. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it, yeah. Jim's boats. Um, I don't have any further questions. Okay. Yeah, I'm all set. No other questions for the applicant, uh, this nope. application. Then let me ask, is there anybody else to speak in, in opposition to this plan as filed? For the record, none. If there are no other questions, uh, do we close the public hearing and proceed to discuss? I'll make the motion to close the public hearing. Second. And uh, Mr. Tenori, have you vote? Yes. Mr. Spangler? Yes. Mr. Noel votes yes to close the public hearing. Um, I, we, we've talked about it. I don't see a problem. It's it's a bigger unit than what's there now, but I trust that it, it looks like it's being done by professionals. The owners described some of the concerns, including their concern for the neighbors. Um, the 10 foot 7 um, encroachment on the easterly side is small, but I point out it's to a porch and it's more than 10 feet. Uh, and the neighborhood kind of doesn't prohibit that, knowing knowing the area that, that, that we're discussing. Yep. Uh, we deal with that, with this type of uh, thing often. I don't have a problem with it. I don't as well, so. So. I don't have any more discussion. Brian? I'm all set. Okay. Uh, now the hard part. This requires a finding because it is a change to a pre-existing non-conforming use. You have a lot of yeah, we have a ton. And uh, some variances, I think. Yeah. Um, so I just just to help, if you want this. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> While you guys are discussing, I marked it. So they, what's going to be needed, in my opinion, is a variance on lot area. Oh. So There's an undersized lot. Oh, yeah, I need to catch you need a variance on the frontage. Yeah, I highlighted yeah, right. these. I can't read them. So lot, lot so area. Lot area. Yeah. Lot frontage. Yeah, frontage. I knew that. Front yard setback. Front side. Yeah. Side, side yard setback. Aye, aye, aye. Lot coverage. And then your 1.6 finding. Does the lot cover? Uh, lot coverage. That doesn't cover in the, the, the lot area. No. No. Oh, because it's too simple. No, you're right, you're right, you're right, size, right. for lack of a better term. And just, yep. I don't know if you want to note it, Tom, but the application calls 13,208 square feet for the lot size. The certified plan only shows 11,808 oh. square feet. So there's a discrepancy there. May, may, may I speak on that? Yes, yeah. please. Um, so I, 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 that was the first one. I got this, this is the very first thing I did is we got the phone and call survey. So um, he actually sent me a, a really good explanation, a long email. Um, so, what the what the town has is accurate at the time the last survey was done um, because it's on the water water level changes um, and the changing of the water level affects the actual size of the land so they, that's that's it. when they did the survey we had a ton of rain um, and the, the the pond encroached probably about two feet or three feet onto the property um, within a matter of a week or two. Um, and you know, the neighbor's dog said his you know his, his dog was up 18 inches. So that forced the water in. What that did is change the size of the lot at that particular time. Interesting. When the water recedes, that lot will actually technically be bigger. So uh, 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 other detail. I filled out the application online. I probably yeah, yeah, went I'm to the assessor's the assessor's uh, information. So the 13 is the town's information you're suggesting. Yeah. I'm not saying. I just wanted just so yeah. you were aware of it. I don't think. Yeah. 
again, my opinion for what it's worth, that in this particular project, the 1,500 square feet in the lot size or the 2,000 right. square feet in the lot size. We don't have to pin know, an exact percentage on it, we can say, per the plan of record. Yeah. I think either way, your, your lot coverage is still, you're still almost 7.5% over your lot coverage. So it, without doing the math, but it another, be. you may still be over. I think it would be safe, but that's 100% your call. We don't, I don't think we have to get an exact percentage. We do at times, but under the circumstance that was explained, it's interesting. I don't know if you've ever noticed It makes sense. Yeah, I don't know. But, but it so does I change. Think, yeah, I, mean, I don't know if that does to me, to be honest with you. But I the, the think water level would change the property. It the, could. The, depends who surveys it. The number, the number that was entered on the application is from the assessor's database. Mm -hmm. um, this is, this. the number on this is on the plan from from AutoCAD or whatever the surveyor used to calculate that area. Um, so I think I think the, the plan is the more accurate number. The assessor's database maps are notoriously inaccurate in my in my experience. Again, I just wanted to note it. Yeah. I don't. To me, it doesn't make a difference. But I don't think we've ever come across you, that. No, because it, again, <laughs> the water levels are changing, right? So, yeah. if in most of the time in your decisions, you're gonna you're gonna call out the plan of record. You're not gonna call out the assessor card. So I think if you, as long as you note the plan of record, you're safe. You're covered. Yeah, it, right. It says I mean, it affects a percentage, but we don't have to do a precise percentage number. That's what I'm suggesting. Okay. I'll, so I'll say all all of all, all the numbers that were calculated are, are based on and then say plan. the plan and not the assessor's card. So keep everything in line with the plan of record. I see. Yeah. Go ahead, Brian. Oh, I was just saying, uh, I, I don't know how you survey a water line and then say that's the water line. It's, yeah. it's, I don't either, but I assume the surveyors have rules. And I think the water line's here. That's how I would read the plan. Because a 2,000 foot discrepancy percentage wise, that's 8% or something. So that would be like, that's a variance of like right a tenth, almost a tenth of the whole, whole property. It's quite a bit. Okay. So or how, do we, how do we deal with it? I would just reference everything off the plan. Because all the numbers and all the calculations were based off of the plan number. This is certified mm -hmm. by a registered design professional. Yeah, yeah. not the big one. Not, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is right. hopefully it's the same. I yes, right. I have the one up there. Right, so right. So. With your decision referencing the plan, I think everybody everything's covered. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, would, I, I think so. The numbers I, are all right there I don't on think the plan. It's just kind of an interesting. And statement, I think the applicant just said book. the plan has the lower lot yeah. area number. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah. so we, it was all calculated. We're off airing, 11, if we grant the variance, that percentage anyway is going to cover the larger lot size that the assessor has. It'll be a smaller percentage if you go by the assessor's number. Right. Yeah. If I'm doing the math right. Yeah, but then you could say like, well, well, should it really be nine thousand something like if it's based on the water line, right? Like, who's to say? Yeah. Okay. Where the water line is at any given point in history, you know. Uh, that's why I'm saying it's very it's very odd to me to say that the a property line is based on a variable um, that's pretty unique in, in, in my professional opinion anyway okay uh, but do you have do you want to request any further information on it I don't I don't think we need to I don't think so I think we as Nick said this is a stamps survey a drawing to say this is where a property line is um, and they're telling us that it's 11,000 and our decision eight, would eight, be eight, based eight. on this plan so, yeah. Yeah. yeah I think we'll come in if we just use yeah. the, this record we can only be so precise right. uh, so uh, where were we um, we're discussing at this point is there is there a motion for approval that's right Thanks to the building inspector, he listed up. Why don't we do the uh, uh, 1.5 or 1.6 first, the determination. Is there a motion that the uh, uh, 
change and extension of the current structure on this parcel uh, shall not be should not render it substantially more detrimental to, than the existing structure on the parcel. I'll make that motion. Second. Okay. For, any further discussion? No. Mr. Tenori, on the determination, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Spangler? Yes. Mr. Noel votes yes as well. I'm going to suggest, so there's a determination under 1.5 or 1.6, whichever it comes under. I think it's 1.6. Thank 1. you. 6. Then um, I'm going to suggest that we put the variances in one vote. Yes. Because we discussed them, they're all listed out separately, and we can, thanks, Mr. I afraid for suggesting, <laughs> refer to the plan of record, which is the file plan with the stamp on it. Um, so is there a motion for variance relief for lot area, frontage, of no less than 15.7 feet to the closest point from Charlotte Ave. Lot coverage, oh, here we go. What is the? Uh, Lot coverage required is 12%. Proposed is 19.48. The lot coverage no greater than 19.48, going with that math. Yep. Um, what's the next variance? We did Side yard on the east. Side yard on the east, no closer than 10.7 feet as shown on the plan of record. Actually, we need on both, right? Side yard on the east is 10.7, yeah. side yard on the west is 30.2. And on side yard for the west side of the structure, no closer than 30.2 feet as shown on the plan of record. Um, the last one would be on frontage, not fr so you got front yard setback. The last one would be on frontage from 150 to 90. That's existing. That's existing. So we have it. It would be under 1.5. Yeah, so I, okay. we've so considered that. It. If it doesn't change, we don't grant a variance for it. Yep. Um, so I suggest that the vote as recited. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Uh oh, Brian, you've got to get it right <laughs> when you draw it up. I, I think I'll second that. <laughs> I think I'll uh, call for a vote. Mr. Tenori, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Spangler on that, uh, the variable variances. How do you vote? Yes. Mr. Noel votes yes as well. Thank you very much for walking us through that. It's a little complicated, but I think we got it, and we'll draft up a decision. And uh, good luck to you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thank you. All right, I'll, I'll find your email. I'm going to send you that email that I got from the surveyor just yeah, so you can I just be understand curious. the dynamic water sure. level. Thanks. I, Thank I, you. I get what he's saying. I get what you're relating, though. I would never discuss I've that. never come across it. Right. We've never come across it. But it yeah. makes sense that water levels go up and down, and yeah. that affects everything. Yeah, I'll get the door. Okay, thank okay, you. Thank you, guys. Because how would you define a buffer? You have to go off of something. Yeah. So you can't say, oh, like, the buffer is fine. 50 feet out level, right? I don't know. It's, yeah, conservation, it's kind of crazy. I never really thought about does it. Does conservation take the they day have, they go they, out and survey, or does it take? Property lines, I would think there's a line. That's it, whether it goes over, over and under, under it, it. I don't it's still know. their property. I mean, the ocean is different because the ocean is, you know, low tide and high tide and average mean tide. I mean, there's a, that's in the statute for oceanfront right. property, but for ponds, I don't know. Interesting. Yeah. Let's, uh, also be that there isn't a line there. Let's stop philosophizing. We have more work. Yeah. All right, we have, uh, what's next? Three 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 turn, turn to Brian for... Thank you. We're on number five. Yep. We're getting to number six. <laughs> uh, application of uh, Silas Zahos uh, for 3 Richmond Drive. We received a um, letter from TMG Carpentry, which is somewhere up there. Um, did you get that letter? I don't know if you dug it out or if Brian sent it to me. I forgot. I have it up. Thank you. I don't know if we got it. Dated September 13. Yeah, try to, how did I get it? You must have sent it to me. I uh, tried to send it to him. That was December, September 13, letter to the zoning board application 20398. 
letter to request the board withdraw the application for three Richmond Drive um, for a finding um, signed by Tom George, who is TMG Carpentry. Uh, is, is there a motion to allow the withdrawal of the application without prejudice? I'll make that motion. Did, no reason is given in the letter. I don't know if Mr. Carmichael knows what was going on. He decided to go a different route, and so uh, Richmond Drive doesn't need to go to some board. Oh, they determined that. I mean, that, up to them. Yeah, okay. They shrunk the square footage of the project, so it didn't. It didn't break the threshold of twenty-five percent. Huh. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'll make that motion. A second. Uh, Mr. Tenori, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Spangler? Yes. And Mr. Newell votes yes to accept the uh, withdrawal of the application for the record. We're nearing the end, we hope. Last is the application seeking a finding for a proposed addition. Sorry, I'm reading the wrong one. It's the, is the agenda wrong? 16 Ridge Road, 16 Ridge. Yeah, the, the agenda, revised agenda says, on this one, the applicant wishes to withdraw. Oh, no, that's for, never mind. I was reading, blocking out the wrong. Applicant seeking a variance to build a new house on a non-conforming lot. The applicant is represented by? Uh, Ian Hedges. And are you? I'm a member of the board of Habitat. Right, Habitat for Humanity, right. Get that plan set here. This is for 16 Ridge Road. When I looked it up today, I actually had trouble. Google has the road name changes from Ridge Road to Lake Ridge Drive. Yeah. What is it? Believe it's Lake Ridge Drive from Google for some reason. Who's speaking? Uh, Ron, somebody on. This is this is uh, so about a I thought it was somebody in the audience. I couldn't see anyone talking. <laughs> uh, right, Google has Ridge Road and right next to it Lake Ridge Drive. I don't know why, but and I looked it up and at first couldn't find it. Uh, applicant is seeking to construct a, a new residence on a non-conforming lot. 5,000 square foot. The frontage is 50 feet, depth 100 feet. And the application says, I'm going to ask the applicant what this means, 5,000 square foot lot given to Habitat for Humanity by the town of Norton with permission to build on this non-conforming site. How does the town give you permission? Yes, Mr. Carmichael, you have an explanation. So recently we had a land auction and this was one of the properties? That no. I'm sorry. It's not. This is, this is acquired by, <coughs> excuse me. This is acquired by Habitat in? Spring of? June-ish? Yeah, there was an RFP that was put out in fall of 2022 um, for the development of this lot. And Habitat acquired it in spring of 2023. So pre-existing structure. Um, I was going to ask if there's a structure there now or not. No, the structure's been taken down. Correct, yeah. It was, it was a, there was a house there that was in disrepair. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Been taken down. So I, I think. But what, the lot went to tax sale at some point? Is that it? it yeah, it was a tax title yep. that, that wrapped up in 2020. I'm getting a headache from that, the other application. Yeah, <laughs> trust tax me. Title. Um, so this is actually a this pre existing, non conforming on a small lot. They meet all the small lot exemption. Setbacks: 25 in the front, 13 on either, either side, yep. and 13 in the rear. Mm -hmm. They're increasing the square footage of what was there, so it's more so a finding on a 1.6. Is it an increase of more than 25 percent? I'm not sure if that's relevant. If there's no structure there now, well, there was a structure there. Yeah, I believe the, the footprint is actually decreasing. The, the overall square footage the, of the house itself. The square footage of the house. Okay. So it's not necessarily the foot. Yeah, the footprint, I agree with you. I it's think it's smaller than what was space. existing. Yeah. But it's a habitable floor space of the house. It went from a one story, and correct me if I'm wrong, but from my recollection, yes. it was a one, one, story, one story house, and then now proposing a two story house. So it, it's 
from everything I've seen and reviewed, it's a finding under 1.6 for an increase of more than 25 percent. And that's it. In your, Correct. Your review. I'm not sure. I think the analysis is right. I was just wondering, the town. I'm not at all disputing yeah, Habitat's intentions. I think it's a great organization and yeah. want to make this work. But did the town? represent that there, this there wasn't any formal approvals that were given by planning board or ZBA at that time right there was a land development agreement that was issued as a part of the, the conveyance interesting so an how, RFP for development I, I just so how can it not familiar with that that's kind of crazy yeah I think I think if you if you look at it from a certain light and, and if I'm speaking out of terms tell me no, to no, quiet no. my mouth but if you, go ahead. if you look at it from a certain light there was an existing structure there so by right they have they have the right to build what's there plus 25%. Yep. yep. Because they're in front of the board, the only reason they're in front of the board is because they're more than that 25. So without being a, an attorney or legal mm -hmm. counsel, my, my opinion from my stance is that they would have, the town does, wasn't in the wrong by saying you have the right to build. I see what you're saying. Right? It's but just yeah, because they proposed, it was conditioned yeah. upon okay. the final so plan. Right. I just confused the application yeah. stating the town gave it with permission yeah. to build and I'm thinking wait how can that happen yeah, this should have been you're saying as right. like planning on final plan yeah. 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 got it got it yeah. Yeah. thank you that, that cleared it up um, yeah I was wondering how does that work too yeah, but, how does, so uh, like does our board here not matter <laughs> right it's up to it's up to town uh, yeah. moderator or something but I get it if it had been under 25 percent they wouldn't even have to come before the board. exactly thanks thank you you did it I try sometimes <laughs> You got it. You don't have to ask permission to talk ever either, uh, Mr. Iafredi. We always appreciate your uh, assistance with Thank that. Thank you. Um, so Habitat, obviously a very good organization, good purpose here, good end in sight. Um, do you have questions? I do, actually. Um, no so water line here. Of course I do. <laughs> I, I, um, we have talked before about what is or is not a permanent structure, and I see steps going beyond the um, setbacks that are dimensioned on both two sides, mm -hmm. um, plan west and plan south. And um, one is dimension three feet, so I would assume then that this, the setback on the west side is 13, 13. which is right at the Minimum, is that correct? Well, that's a question for Mr. Iafredi, I think, our building so inspector. I've, I've always looked at, at the egress points of the house and have been told by other, other people in my position for what it's worth that um, because it's an, an egress, a required egress life safety feature out of the house that unless it was a larger deck, sun porch or, or deck, porch, right. this is meeting almost the minimum requirements for egress. You really can't take that. And hold that against somebody on on the okay. setback. And Nick a said, assessment. Nick think, said that a few months ago. Yeah, yeah, that came up on it. Bay Road. Yeah, um, it was I don't remember. The I know, it was that, that house at the end of Plain and Bay there. And uh -huh. frankly, we interpreted it the other way. I mean, we've held steps to be a further encroachment on applications prior to maybe a year or two ago. Uh, and Nick brought this up a few months ago and. You can't, you can't prohibit somebody's right to get out of the house. Yep. It's basic state. That's that's the simplest life safety feature in construction, right? Is, is you have to get out of, right. out of the structure. So what the purpose would there be to us saying, well, the door then can be inlet inset, and the steps can be within the inset? Doesn't make yeah. doesn't make a well, lot of zoning really sense. Well, I think really what we said either. is the steps steps are defined as permanent structure. Right. I think is how we. Qualify that's that, that's how we did it. Qualify okay. that through the bylaws. I right. get what you're saying it should about be. egress. Probably should be. Yeah. I don't think it's defined as a if, permanent. If structure. I may, gentlemen, it also doesn't have a, a roof covering over it. It's one I've gone before Taunton. Who are you just for the I'm record? I'm sorry, my name's Tim Travers. I'm the president of Habitat for Humanity, but I, I also own a construction company and I'm also a licensed building commissioner for what that's worth. Um, my interpretation of the code is that. In all due respect to your zoning and, and to Nick's point that you, you can't deny the life safety feature of, of getting out of the house, but also we, we don't have a roof covering on it. So for example, <clears throat> I've run into similar um, variance issues where you go to remove a set of port, you know, set of stairs because they're dilapidated, put it back on. 
if it has a roof covering, I, I would find your point to be valid. Um, and, 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 but because there's not a roof covering, I, I believe that you know the arch architect engineers feel that, that it's, it's not applicable yeah, in this Our, our bylaw doesn't distinguish um, that. And maybe it's time to clarify the bylaw. I agree with you know, Brian uh, Spangler. But, yeah, um, and, the, and the drawings are consistent with that, so you know, it not having a Appreciate the so comments. Thank you. Yep, but yep. Our, our bylaw just doesn't get into that as far as I know. So I, I have no problem. Good question. Where's the other uh, stair set? It's in the back? Right. Back left side of the building on the driveway side. Yep, and then in back toward bridge. Oh, no, that's front. I'm sorry. Right, yeah. It's plan west and plan south there. It's a 5 by 3 and a 6 by 5. Yep, I see. Okay. Is there further discussion or questions? Nope. Is there a, uh, well, is there anybody else to speak in favor of or in opposition to the application? I'd like to speak, please. Please identify yourself. Hi, I'm Scott Kapp, on 18 Ridge Road. I'm in a butter. Yes, please go ahead. So just for a little background, this neighborhood has several houses on our street that were built before the zoning that are not forming that are too close to the property lines. And also, I built my garage. I received zoning relief to build it close to 25 feet to the street. The street also is not, I, the way it's marked on the map, it's not where it's actually paved. So if you look on the map, it's going to say that my garage is 19 feet from the street. That's why I received zoning relief to get it put that close to not take up too much of my backyard. But the actual street, if you measured it, is like 28 feet from the front of my garage to the street. And the existing house that was that was there that got torn down, the dilapidated house, was also too close to the street. It stuck out probably six or eight feet past my garage. So the, the flip in that they're proposing looks like a nice house and it would fit into the character of the neighborhood. So I recommend that you guys approve the variance. Appreciate hearing that, thank you. Thank you. Any questions for the speaker? Nope, I'm all set. Yep. Thank you for the comments. Appreciate appreciate that. Um, is there anything else from the board, or is there a motion to close the public hearing? I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Um, Mr. Tenori, are you vote? Yes. Mr. Spangler? Yes. Mr. Noel says yes as well. Um, no problem here. I have no issues. So it's just a finding, thankfully. Um, under 1.6 that this uh, according to the plan of record as submitted um, discounting or I don't know how to put it um, notwithstanding the stairs uh, for the two uh, areas of egress I'm not sure we have to write it in but we'll see um, as shown in the plan of record um, will not make this substantially more detrimental for the neighborhood of course probably uh, definitely an improvement for the neighborhood, as well as providing housing for uh, a deserving family. Yeah. Um, all those, uh, Mr. Tenori, how do you vote on the finding? I vote yes. Mr. Spangler, under 1.6? Yes. And Mr. Noel votes yes as well. And I think that's the only vote we need. Um, and right. that building commissioner agrees yep. with that. Yeah, uh, good luck, thank you very much for the presentation. Sorry to make you wait. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank, 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 thank you. Thank you for the work time. Yeah, yeah, always good to have uh, Habitat. Uh, yeah. Thank you. You do good work, and we appreciate that. When does construction start? As soon as you give us a building. Yeah, that's what I said. Don't point it. It's an innocent question. I would just... No, that's the first. Okay, so November 1st. This winter. As soon as you can get where. The application's good. I mean, we've had it. it was, this is a formality. Okay. So once this is done and recorded, you get me the decision, and trust okay. me, I want to yeah, see well, how much is for the decision to get recorded right. so we can move Well, we have to draw up a decision. Yeah. It's him, then it's me, then we sign it. We'll try to do, we'll do this decision first, because it's probably the easiest one we had tonight, too. Okay. Uh, so you have a Within a week, we could probably have it, and then it gets days. posted, and then you have to wait 20 days in case anybody objects, nobody's mm -hmm. going to object. You know, so. month, maybe. You keep me posted that 
All right. You know how to find me. Yep. And we'll yeah, we're, we're ready to break ground on November first, so hopefully we can make that date. We'll try yeah. to do this one in the next day or two. I mean, if we can. All right. We appreciate it. Thank schedules. you. Thank you. Try and support that. To you. Thank you. Good luck. Awesome. Good, Good luck to you. Awesome. 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 That's Good. great. Thank you all. Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank Good luck. Good night. Thank you. That's fantastic. You too. Good. Those properties. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, so, that's so awesome. She just said they already have a family ready too, so yeah, the family is going to pitch in and help out with the build. Oh, uh, that's wonderful. Man, yeah. That's so awesome. I just didn't understand what she said. The town told us we could build. I was like, uh oh. I saw that too. I'm like, so why are they here? Just like the. Do it. Yeah, it, a lot of people wouldn't think of it that way, but they have by right. Yeah. They could they could build that house. I think it was 837 square feet existing. Yeah, as soon as Plus 24.9%. Realistically, uh, by right. Interesting. Yep. yep there, should, I, there should have been a little a condition or yeah. an asterisk that said, you know, hmm. pending. So the water. But that's we didn't know that until the designs were in. Exactly. Right. So you would have never yeah. known that until the design came in. So yeah. Yeah. So it makes sense. They might not have known the exact dimensions that we But all for a good cause with them. So it's Definitely. nice yeah. to see them in town. And, yeah. Yep. And yeah. doing something like that for, like you said, a family need. Is Habitat, I should have asked them, is Habitat. Is, there, is it the Attleboro area habitat, or does Norton have its it own? It says it's old colony. Oh, old colony. Old right? colony habitat for humanity. Didn't Mr. Mr. Kimball Kimble used to be uh, who? Bob Our Kimble? old mo moderator. And Selectman. Uh, what's yeah, I know, Selectman. I know Mr. Kimball. He was, wasn't he president at one time, or chair, or something? I'm not sure. I think they're regional, similar like a YMCA. Yeah. They're regional. Yeah. Um, I think that's how they operate. Oh. I don't really, truly know much about the meat and potatoes of it. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. I should have asked them. Our company does help with them to pro bono work, and yeah. it's just amazing. Yeah, yeah. it sure is. Um, is there any other business for us tonight? No, uh, but for note, for the next two meetings, because we can't get the media center, we'll be over Zoom. We, why can't we get the media center? Because we're, when I asked Jason, uh, who was the director, he said that they're booked for Wednesday. And so there is no space. You could always you could just do it in person meeting, right? You could do the library. library. Yeah. Well, the library's library. closed, so. Uh, you get the library, but we could serve meetings and. Yeah, can I ask you to town. find, ask a um, town manager even, you know, what yeah, other space right. we could hold a meeting? Do we have the power to go all remote legally? I didn't think we did now. We do. It was extended to 2025, and so the Conservation Commission is currently doing so. Really? I, I thought, uh, I didn't know that. So I, I figured that would be the better. Yeah, maybe we should close out what, what uh, cause we still Oh, we still have to return the people on the yeah. meeting and stuff here. I'm sorry? I was just going to say, maybe we should close out the formal meetings. It looks well, like we have people on. We're still in the formal meeting, though. We were just talking, oh. talking about our next meeting. The next meeting is October. I don't even have the last one. So it was 25th, I believe. Yeah, it's a little later. Okay. Oh. 25th. Okay. We had November, November for November 2. Yeah, I thought, we, I thought we did at least November. And I think it was the 22nd. Let me just check. Yep, 22nd. Cool. Can we ask you, Brian, to find out from the town manager if there's some space? that's habitable that we can get into for the meeting? Well, I know we could use the town hall space, the stuff, the one outside my office, the... We can? The old yeah. spot? Yeah, the old spot's been reworked so we can have the... Parks and Rec uses it, uses that space for their meetings. Who does? Parks and Recreation. Uses I didn't know that. I didn't, yeah. I, I so, didn't know we were back in. Yeah, so yeah. we can use that if we want, but I just didn't know if it was too small. But yeah, we can use that. Are there, is there anything for the next meeting? Not yet. No. Um, we just had everything for ZBA tonight. Good. Uh, so right now, we, I mean, so there's a possibility we may not even have any. Right. Yeah, so let's, yeah. Let's try to do town hall. Yeah, that's fine. And let us know. I've really gotten used to seeing Tom monthly. <laughs> Are we sure? Because I, I had the 15th on what? Um, for November. Is this my plug then? Yeah, it's yours. One second. I can't keep track of anything. Okay. Oh, I got both yeah, actually. Hold yeah, on. What do you have? I, I think I get the sure 15th and the 22nd. For October? Because I think we said November. 
for November, yeah. Was somebody not? Yeah, Charlene gave us both. Oh, Charlene had a mis I thought that was a mistake. We got two notices and one didn't have a date on it or something. What was that? I'm sorry, maybe that's not the case. Well, in this case, we have... I, I accepted one of the meetings and I didn't accept the other one and now I can't remember why. Uh, just let me know. We just need the one. 15th. Yeah, because normally we do the third Wednesday, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, which would be the 22nd. Which would but be the 22nd. For some reason, I... It would be the 15th. That's the third. Because we have the first. Oh, the 15th is the third? Yeah. You're... Uh, so... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 15th so would I, be the third. And then you also... So we, we usually end up second. You get Thanksgiving the next yeah, day. Yeah, because tw 22nd is, like, two days before Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. I think we talked week. about that, right. Yeah. So we I, said we can't do Wednesday, so I, I thought the 15th. But yeah, yeah. That wasn't for November. Yep. Yeah, I agree. I'm good with the 15th. Me too. I was just confused because we had the Charlene with the two meetings on our agenda, so. Yeah, I don't even look at I that. I think that's I why I didn't accept yeah. that second one, but we, I can't remember. We did move October's to the next week because I'm, I'm not here. Yeah, you're not here. So right? it's the 18th, October? No, it's the 20, 25th, 25th of October 5th. and the 15th of November. Yes. Okay. To stay away from Thanksgiving that, yeah. that 23rd. Yep. I, yeah, agreed. Okay. And we didn't do December yet. Yeah, as well as we'll December. No, we did not. You want to do December? 20th would be the third Wednesday of December. Even that's a little close. I mean, you're, it's the fall of Christmas is the following week, but it's... Yeah, that 20th works for me. Ride, so. 20th? Either one. 13th or 20th doesn't matter. You guys pick. 13th might be safer, but I don't care. Okay. I don't buy presents anymore. Um, I, I have a... He and May meeting that, that week. The 13th? Yeah. Okay, so 20th, December. 20th, business. All right. Sorry. Okay. No, it's okay. It's, it'll be fine. We won't have any matters then, right? You never know. No, we don't. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay.